Okay guys, it is uh, airbox delete kit time. So what I'm gonna do is remove the airbox off the bike. And uh, here's my reasons for doing it. First of all, it looks cool. And we all know it looks cool, so let's not lie to ourselves. That's the main reason. Second, um, uh, weight reduction could be helpful. If that, that might not be the case though, based on some other things I'm gonna tell you here shortly. Um, and also, when I'm riding the bike now at high RPMs, it seems like like all the maps I tried and everything, they all kind of weren't that different at high RPMs. And I did a little bit of research and revelry ra watched some revelry racing videos. Basically, they talked about air being the bottleneck at high RPMs. And so there's two things you can do to fix that. Uh, the best one, I guess, would be the bigger valves head. And it's like, it's a pretty expensive uh, modification. There's also a throttle body exchange that'll make the throttle body uh, air intakes wider. And uh, that's another semi-expensive mod, but it's not as expensive as the other one. And uh, to do, so I like to do these, like the sensible way to do it, like for me, I'm like, well, I can just do the throttle body if I want, and then later do the heads, right? I, I talked to Robert Racing, and they said you could just put the throttle body on, it'd be fine. You'd see some you'd see some improvement. But in order to do that, you have to take out the airbox anyway. So for me to uh, continue on progressing here, uh, trying to make this thing as fast as possible and as light as possible, the airbox has got to come out. So that's really the main reason for this kit, and uh. I'm also hoping that when I switch from the airbox uh, setup and go to pod filters, I will get better air that way also. It's mainly because when you look at the way the bike works, the air comes in around the side panels uh, to get to the bike. Uh, once it's inside the side panels, it's in like a compartment where it then gets sucked into a filter. And from the filter, it gets sucked into the airbox. And from the airbox, it gets pushed into two tubes that go into the two air intakes. And it seems like quite a circuitous route, really. So if I can just make it air go through the filter into the intake, I feel like that would be easier for the engine to suck the air in. Because there's nothing in the air box that's pushing air in. It's just another thing in the way. So the only, only way I would think it doesn't help would be if there's some kind of air turbulence or something. So that's my plan. So it's basically the first step I have to make and uh, to progress any further. All right, so next I'm gonna show you guys what is in the box. Okay guys, this is the contents of the MK Designs Airbox Delete Kit. So we'll start with uh, the fun stuff here first, the pod filters. So this filter here with the three prongs on it, I don't know why it has three prongs because this is the crankcase and breather filter. Uh, it's gonna plug in uh, just above the starter. So if this is some kind of drainage, or, I don't understand why there's three. Anyhow, it only needs two. So that's what this is. Also, it's, it's huge. So these are the uh, pod filters. Trying to crinkle this too much. I will give you all the measurements on this because I actually they sent these and I measured the uh, air intake on these and it's actually bigger than some DNA filters that I got, which I thought were the right size. So I'll see. Well, I'll tell you what fits and what doesn't. But because you're probably gonna want to buy some different filters. Those are those seem fine to me. They don't look that different from the DNA filters I bought, but. I don't know. So these are battery cables to extend your battery. Uh, this here is the battery box kit. Uh, this here, so it's a new battery box. These are, uh, these are little brackets that go at the bottom of your bike after you take out the uh, air box and they hold in this piece here trying to crinkle the stuff too much but this is another this is a plate that's gonna go across the bottom of your bike and then these here are brackets for putting the plates in and these are the side plates they look pretty good they're well painted and stuff but everything in here is like like serious metal it's, it's heavy the entire kit's like eight pounds so I'm my plan is to put this in and what and all as much as possible I'm going to try and change things around so that I'm not using all these parts because I really want the air box area to be opened up as much as possible without these plates and I just but I need to go through this exercise first and see what I'm in, see what I end up with so I may ride around with this full kit for a while or I may may not but we'll see 
but yeah, I'm hoping to be able to uh, not use all this weight. And I also got this. This is the uh, this is the EVAP Eliminator Kit. Um, this is the second time I bought it. First time I bought it, I bought it from uh, a guy on eBay called Fuel Dongles, and uh, he has my parts to lay my money. And it just was like the worst experience I ever had on eBay. So I would say I got this from Smart Moto. Not only was it cheaper, it showed up faster, and it actually showed up. So. Smart Moto EVAP. There's also two versions of this, so make sure you get the right one for your bike. And I will put links to all this stuff in the description that I'm using. Also, anything else I use, I bought some extra hosing and stuff, but whatever I need, I will link in there for you guys to uh, take a look at. All right. All right, I have one more thing. Uh, if you have the uh, air injection uh, system still on the front of your bike, you're gonna wanna buy a kit to eliminate that. I think the newer motorcycles don't have that. I'm not entirely sure, but there, if you if you have a, a hose thing up here in the front connecting the two sides uh, of your bike and with a hook and then another hose going up to your gas tank, that goes all the way back to your air box and you're gonna wanna just uh, get rid of it. And then there's also, and when you buy the kit, there is a plug that stops you from getting air codes. So. Uh, the other thing I mentioned, the uh, uh, the EVAP Illuminator, you don't need that for what I'm doing here with the airbox. That's just something I'm going to do because I'm going to be in that area, and uh, it's just a little bit extra weight to get off the bike. So, Alright All right, guys, so I went ahead and I uh, pulled off the side panels and I pulled off the gas tank. If, if you don't know how to do that, uh, in my big bore video I go over that uh, in detail. So. Next step is going to be to remove this, and these are number 10s right here. Um, there's two videos that cover air boxes for this bike. One of them is the instructional video for this, and I'm going to just basically go follow that as closely as possible until I get to the parts I want to change. And there's another video uh, of a guy doing it custom, and I will uh, link both of those in the description so you get more information, but I'm going to go ahead and keep, keep on trucking with this. All right, guys, I uh, removed this from the uh, right side. I'm over on the left side now. The next step is to uh, remove the battery. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on the left side, I'm gonna disconnect uh, this thing right here. So, and next thing I'm gonna do is just uh, take off the uh, connections off the terminals. I'll, just, I'll do this side first, and then I will uh, slide the battery out. All right, I went ahead and uh, unhooked both of my battery terminals, and uh, I did pull down the strap and pulled it off. Next step is taking out this little bracket here, and that is a number five on there, number five hex. All right, at this point uh, in the video from MK Designs, they take off the back tire and pull out this uh, plastic shield and start working on it. I'm going to attempt to not do that. I think uh, what I need to do next is take out the battery box, which is these two screws, and then there's another one right back here, which you can see on the other side. Let's take it around here. That's it. I think it's uh, which one? this one right here. That screw there. So I think it's just those three. Alright, those screws came out super easy. Uh, there's some cabling hooked on to the battery box here. And I believe that these fuse, uh, or these uh, relay holders are also hooked onto the battery box. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect those. Uh, or just pull the whole assembly off. Okay, got the fuse boxes um, off. The trick to it, um, uh, they, they slide on little things like this. You wanna take a pick and just press down into it. Um, let's reach around and press in and you can pull it out real easy. So I got both those off. They were on the battery box. I'm going to run this. Alright, this came out pretty easy. I could actually just pull that little plastic bolt it had and just pop it out of the hole and then I just clipped it off. Turns out there's another bolt here. I'll take that one off right there. It's holding in the battery box. All right, I see now I've missed a, another little piece of plastic there, a little screw thing. 
right there. I gotta pop down through that metal piece. All right, there is one more bolt. This one right here. You can't really see it from the other side though, because it's uh, just a little bit behind this flap here. But I have to get that one out too. All right, so that last screw that was behind this flap here was pretty hard to get out. I had to uh, take out another screw up here so that I could pull this flap farther back out. And then I had to come in through the other side with one of these wrenches and just kind of get in there and work on it from back through here. So it's out now. I'm going to put the other screw back in and keep going. All right, I'm pulling the battery box out. and I'm. Uh, it's got two little... Uh, like pointy things that are wrapped around a knob up here up front and so I kind of tilted it back until it released from those so I pulled it out and I realized there's even more stuff attached to the bottom of it down here so things like this thing here is just a little you can see it or not but this this tube whatever it is so I'm gonna have to remove that and uh seems like Grand Central Station of tubes and screws all right so i'm gonna get rid of that thing okay so i got uh this thing here out of this tube this rubber brace thing turns out there's another white plug underneath there that's hooked up and running through this there's like a, there's another red one in there too so uh, and they're attached to the bottom of the battery box Take a look at those things. It might be easier just to clip that thing that are wrapped around, but we'll see. Okay, so the white plug was easy enough to get out with a pick. I got this red one. I came over to the other side of the bike, and there's a red one inside this boot thing, which you gotta slide down. So I'm gonna pull that one out. Okay, so this battery box did not want to come out. What I was trying to pull out the other side of the right side of the bike the whole time. And I was like, well, let me try the left side. So that went much easier. Just kind of turn it like that and then pull it out. But all right, man, I solved that uh, puzzle. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so this is the air box on the right side. Uh, the next step is going to be to remove these clips here and uh, take these off both sides. So I can get to these and uh, remove these clips so I can unhook the, thrott the throttle body from the airbox. And I'm going to be uh, unscrewing these top parts also that are holding the airbox to the top. And I'm basically just try and pull the airbox out. I don't think it's going to come out this hole based on one of the videos I saw already. And uh, so the solution to that was to split it in half. So we'll see. If, see if I can get it out or not. All right, some of these screws are Phillips screws, and they're in there pretty good. So I went ahead and hit them with some PP blasters to let them sit. Went ahead and hit these two, and also the clamps on here. So I don't want to strip anything, so I'm just going to let it sit for a while. I'll be back. All right, guys, went ahead and removed the two bands off of the uh, throttle body uh, connectors to the airbox completely. And I went ahead and just uh, pulled these bands out. Those Phillips heads weren't worth messing with. All I had to do was pull the band back to release the cables and stuff. And up here, I went ahead and cracked these a little bit. And so now, another thing that's not in any of the other instructions, uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, take this out. This, I think it's the temperature sensor or something. So pull that out. And then I'm gonna try and <clears throat> break the air box in two while it's still hooked up to the bike. So it'll be kind of solid to work with. I'm going to take the filter out too first before I do that. Okay, uh, so I'm looking inside the air box right now. And also, before I split this, I'm going to know I, I priced these on eBay. So if I ever have to go back, I'm going to be able to just buy another one. They're like 140 bucks. But you can see uh, these are the air intake tubes. You can see how they stretch. They're all the way to the back of the, of the air box. And these run all the way through here to the throttle body so that's a lot of tubing we're gonna be removing and it looks pretty i mean i don't want to say it's like super restrictive in there but and that's not the greatest set if you want a lot of airflow so 
be interested to see what happens when I get this out. Hopefully I don't need to like change the tune too much, if at all, but since I have the Power Commander 5, I have the ability to do that. But let me go ahead and try and split this, and then I'll tell you how I got it split in half. Also, a couple more things. If you have the, uh, if you have not uh, removed your air injection system, this is uh, the plug you'll be plugging off with it, and that's where it goes in normally. I removed mine already, but that's if you have the, uh, on the front of the engine, the two, uh, the two, two tubes running into one that runs all the way back to this thing, so the air box. Also, I had to remove a couple more tubes on here, a couple of hoses, uh, this one here goes in the air box, and then there's another one right here, I'm gonna have to pull off that goes in the air box, so. Okay, so I'm on the top of the air box, what I did was I punched a hole right at the seam with a uh, small screwdriver, a real small one, and once it got all the way through, I moved it back a little bit. And then I was able to put another hole next to it, and then I was able to fit a larger uh, flathead in there. And it, I can just kind of go down the seam now and uh, hammer this in a little bit if I have to. But I can generally just split it apart, so I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, so uh, once I got this rear corner of the air box split, it really started coming apart. So I think if, I think as long as I get this part and this front part. Uh, well split, it'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking out these two bolts I was using for uh, leverage to get it split. And then I'm gonna pull it down and just uh, split it completely. Okay, yeah, so once I got the two top corners done, that was really what you need to do is get that, and then it pretty much just comes right apart. So I pulled it back off the uh, throttle body and uh, it's gonna commence to pull it the rest of the way apart and Pulling all the way out. Alright guys, I got the first half out and there was a there's a technique to it, so I'm gonna tell you what it is real quick. I'm on the right side of the bike here. What I did is I came in after I got them all split and I pushed the bottom in on this on this side so that the thing turned sideways. And then I rotated everything forward like that. And so this piece here was on top here like this. And then I pushed this bottom one, that was actually the right side, farther forward like this. And I was able to finally work this one out the opposite side that it was actually installed in. So it took me a long time to figure that out. It's like one of those Christmas puzzles you get that no one can solve and then no one can find the puzzle after after a month. Yeah. I almost went all Gordian knot on it, but I'm like I'm solving this, so, all right. Okay, right, or the, I guess the right side's out. I also, also pulled the right side out of this, out of the right side of the bike. Um, also, to do, when I was doing this messing around, I unhooked the fuse box so I could get some more leverage moving around, so. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, since I got all this all wide open, I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna measure the intake on this, like what size filters you'd actually need. I'm gonna test the filters I have and see uh, if everything fits. Okay guys, uh, before we discuss this, I'm gonna give you some basics on the pod filters here. Uh, when you're buying them, what you're looking for is uh, the internal uh, diameter here. So, like the full end-to-end -end length. And on this out, when I measure this with a micrometer, micrometer, or whatever, uh, it's exactly 42 millimeters this entry and that is that's what MK Designs told me it was because I asked them I told them I was probably gonna buy filters they said it's 42 millimeters I measured it it is 42 millimeters this is the DNA filter I got uh, the entry on this thing is 43 millimeters so and it fits on pretty good you got it comes with a band and everything okay another thing you need to remember is the length when they give you the length they're giving you the uh, length of the element so when you're buying these, like this is, I bought the 60 millimeter and it looks like they bought, they sent the 70 millimeter. And uh, it looks like they also, you have a maybe 43 or 44 millimeter uh, diameter. And either one of them appear to fit on. But I think this one's a tighter fit. This one kind of goes on there and holds a little bit. This one's a little bit loose, but you know, they come with bands so you can tighten them down. And this is just a rubber flange, right? So, so, so you have the, uh, 
element length. And the thing that I was worried about when I bought these was I didn't know if it was going to run into this bar. And this thing just doesn't. I came out here with a ruler and I'm like, I kind of estimated it. And I thought it would look like pretty much what it does right now. So it, it doesn't hit the bar, which is good. It's a little air light. So also, when you buy these, not only when, you, when you're doing the length, uh, you have to add the flange length on, which is this part here. So it seems like it's generally 16 millimeters for all of them from DNA. So this is actually like 75 millimeters total, or 76 millimeters total uh, height. And so theirs is probably like 86. So they both work. Uh, I'm gonna use my DNA one since I think they're a slightly less loose fit. And also, you can see a little bit more of the filter itself. And I don't think that extra 10 millimeters is gonna matter. I think this is probably a better quality filter. And so it's gonna be better. And plus, I mean, it's only gonna suck air through that, as much air as it can get through that hole, right? So on this filter element, it's like five times bigger than now probably total airspace, right? At least four times. So it's probably gonna be able to get enough air through this. But I mean, that's, DNA also has a bunch of other filters and I thought about getting one on a little snorkel that hangs down to this empty area with a bigger with a bigger uh, filter element. And I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe next time. Maybe, maybe I'll do that later. But for now, I wanted something that I was pretty sure was gonna work. And also I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna add more tube. You know, it's half this battle is getting rid of tube stuff. I also considered velocity stacks. My friends were telling me, hey man, try velocity stacks. And it sounds cool, but I just didn't like the idea of having a big hole, big air intake hole. So hopefully these are smoothing the airflow enough and also giving enough air. So I'm not sure they give it enough air, but hopefully they, hopefully I'm not introducing turbulence into the equation. So, all right. So basically, yeah, 43 millimeter is what I would go for, or 44, probably work too. DNA sells both. And there's like a better selection of 44 millimeter ones. But yeah, when you go to the website, just search uh, 44mm as one word, and then inlet. And that's pretty much gonna give you all the 44s, and do the same thing with 43, which is what I have, 43 space, 43mm space inlet, and you'll get a whole selection of 43 millimeter pod types. So, but I'll put, I'll put links in the uh, description. All right, cool. All right, guys, before I keep going, for me now is plug in this white uh, plug that was plugged in. And also the red one that's in here, it's hanging in there somewhere. Um, those two were hooked to the bottom of the air box via a little hoop, so put those back together. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put this top screw back in. I left it out so I'd have uh, a little bit of flexibility up here. So, I'm going to get back to you. Alright guys, I've decided to segue to uh, getting rid of the EVAP system on the bike since everything is tore apart here. Uh, I think so. This is the kit. It comes with this plastic plug, which I believe is this right here. And I just got to blank that out with that plug, and and the, and the system itself is uh, here. The canister I'm going to be removing is right here. You can see it. It's this whole thing. It's like it's got two bolts on either side. So after I. Uh, put in that plug, I'm going to pull all the hoses out of that that I can find, take off these bolts and pull this out. And uh, there's the hose that's going into right to the inlet. Let's see if I can get over there. I think it's this one right here. They send you a screw and you just put a screw or a bolt and you put a bolt in that to block it off. The rest of the hoses all come out. And this is one of the hoses right here. And they send you two little... Uh, stoppers to cover this hole up and throttle body but this whole hose thing's gonna come out and yeah, it plugs in on both sides so first thing i want to do is uh go ahead and uh, change that plug out all right so this is the uh valve pump thing whatever it is uh, i went ahead and pulled the plug out it's pretty easy and then this is the plug that's blanked out now so i'm gonna go ahead and uh Need to loosen up these hoses before I get started because I gotta pull them out eventually anyway. And then I'll start taking bolts out of the bottom there. Okay guys, the uh, trait to getting this thing out is for is there's only one of these bolts, so I loosened it up, swung this thing down, and then what you do is you reach in and you pull this thing towards you. And it unhooks from its brackets. Now it's kinda loose, so it's gonna pull the rest of the way out, disconnect some hoses. 
Alright, it turns out I kind of got to disconnect the hoses before I do anything. And they're stuck on there pretty good, so what I'm doing to get rid of these, because I was just going to cut them, but I really don't care about these hoses. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing them like this, and just spinning them, and then it, that provides the tension to like just the pull to pull them right off the knobs, or the nozzles. Also, uh, this is the one you want to keep track of. This is when you're going to put the 8mm screw in, I believe. Yeah, that's good. The one that hooks onto there. Alright, here is the uh, inlet tank. Inlet from the tank. Went ahead and uh, sealed that one off. Uh, here's the actual piece right here. Um, doesn't weigh too much, maybe about a pound and a half, two pounds. Uh, this is the one that you want to seal off with the bolt that comes in the kit. I'm going to start pulling some hoses out. Uh, I think I'm gonna Let's go ahead and start yanking on this thing and see which hoses come out. And then uh, start tracing on pulling them. All right, so I'm looking at this pump. I've This one here, this hose here, it was oriented uh, like uh, this. It's in here. This hose here went down to the bottom into the tank. This other hose wraps around and it comes up. That's the one that's going to come up around the frame to uh, these two devices, these two pipes here, hoses. Alright, so go ahead and uh, this is one of the two uh, entries for the hoses. I'm just going to take it and roll this like this until it comes off. Bang, because I don't care about it. It's going in the garbage or hose. And then I'm going to put this little cap thing on there that came with the kit. Bang, sealed off. Let's do the other side, and I'm going to pull this whole T-hose out. Alright, so the last hose that was hanging down was the one that was, like, right up in front down here. And it's apparently just hooks up in, uh, in south of the atmosphere anyway. So, pull that thing out. There we go. That's the delete for the EVAP system. Alright guys, I went ahead and bagged up all the junk, and, uh, weighed it to see like the total weight of everything I removed off and it came out to about seven pounds. So it's a pretty pretty close match between the two kits if I use all their pieces. Um, also the uh, one of the videos I saw the guy said where the uh, EVAP kit canister was sitting was a good place to put the battery if you were going to move stuff around and it looks like there's room for it. I'll have to pull probably uh, one of my exhaust slip-ons off but when I pulled the EVAP kit out, it was covered in chain grease because it's right next to the chain. So if I do that, I'm going to have to do some, build something that will keep uh, grease from getting all over the battery. So uh, right now, I'm just kind of looking at looking at what I got, seeing if I can improve on this situation from the kit at all. Uh, just making some plans here. All right, so I went ahead and put on these. Uh, brackets here that are going to hold up the tray that goes across the bottom. just want to see what kind of space I have to work with in there and uh, it test fit my battery in there. It fits, but I don't know if it's going to fit with everything else, so but that's a good data point. I'd love to put it down in there. That means I could do something different up here. Um, so that's where right. Also, I removed one more bracket that was holding this wiring harness up here to uh, this area because I'm not sure how it's going to end up setting, so Get total freedom of movement here. All right, so I went ahead and I wanted to see what kind of mobility I had with the ECU, where I could put it. And uh, basically, to get it out, there's four T20 bolts on mine. There is. They go directly into the plastic here behind it. And uh, moves around. But there's also this thing here is hooked into wiring harness. Uh, so I'm going to have to uh, remove this bolt here so I can move that thing around. And there was another connector behind it. Uh, it was attached to the plastic right here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this thing here was uh, clipped onto the plastic. I just, all I had to do was just push it that way and it came right off this little hook here. So, Alright, all right, I put the ECU back in place and uh, put this piece back on and that clip thing that was behind it. I could actually get the ECU down into this area, okay, but it like was a tight fit, and the problem was this giant clip thing. Really, that's the issue that's hooked onto the ECU. 
is pretty small, but that clip thing is big and unwieldy. So it's, yeah, it didn't fit. I probably, I mean, I could have fit it in there, but nothing else would have fit, and it would look pretty junky, so. I'll have to find uh, some proof in some other way if I'm going to do it. But if I can get the battery uh, off of this area, like the kit has a battery box that goes up here and then you cover it, you might be able to do something with covers up here that aren't as big. They just cover the ECU area. I don't know. We'll see. I would have to put the battery down where the uh, the other uh, EVAP system was. So. All right, guys. <clears throat> I tried to fit my battery back there where the uh, EVAP canister was. And it doesn't fit. So it was close though. It wasn't those was little uh, tongs that are on the bottom of the shelf there. It would have fit, but it's uh, too tight. So I'm kind of stuck with nothing but the, the actual kit options right now. I've tried to move everything around all over the place, and it uh, looks like I'm going to go with the kit stuff. The only place I'm going to be able to save, save any weight, possibly, is replacing different panels, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, so uh, my updates were like a bus, kind of. But taking off the exhaust, I did get the opportunity to put this up, which is the MK Designs uh, uh, hanger for your uh, license plate. So it just hooks right up into the... Uh, to where the exhaust sticks or exhaust uh, is attached, and uh, it's way better than the one I had down here because it was just it was just blocking all this, and I couldn't line tires right. And I never felt really secure that I had it set up right. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, one of my LEDs lines back through here, and just uh, get that all set up. All right, I went ahead and uh, wired up my license plate again. The holes were not good. Good, I had to like drill out a little bit more space. These two holes, um, and I'm running my LED connectors back up to where they were before. I would, I advise using Wagos if you get the opportunity because I have these things like if you get them the wrong polarity instead it's just kind of a pain in the way. So, and also like just twist tying these things together every time you accidentally pull them out, it's not a good time. So, if I do have a way to hide the Wagos, I'd use the Wagos. Just wrap them up in electrical tape when you're done. So I'm gonna like wait until the bike is functioning and I'm gonna test these before I clean them up but now I am going ahead and I'm I lightly uh, tied these off and I'm gonna start uh, stowing away cables all right as I uh, continue on here I went ahead and attached the battery cable extenders on here and basically they were it just seemed like a whole lot of bare connection showing up so I bought so I had this old heat shrink, industrial gigantic heat shrink that I bought a long time ago for some reason. And so I'm just going to put that over these connections and just heat them up a little bit and shrink it down so that they're safe. And I'll continue uh, tidying things up. Okay, I loosely tied off these two here. I, uh, behind here, I tied off this uh, red side battery cable. Here, which is kind of weird. Okay, so this part is supposed to have a screw through here too, and there's like a metal flange thing, but it, the screw didn't fit and the hole didn't line up, so it was kind of like a double sign. But anyhow, so the second part of it, it's fine. It hooks up. It holds the uh, it holds a bracket against this plastic, so it holds it. That's like the only screw down here that's left from the, holding the, the plastic forward. So. Uh, but also the part that's missing the bolt, it still works okay, because it's up against a metal flange still. So basically it just tightens it up against that flange. And it works pretty good for uh, cable, cable maintenance. So see how much this is still showing when I put all the things on. These are still kind of loose and hanging. So I put one up here, one here. I had one up here, I might put it back, but I just cut it a second ago because I was rearranging stuff. But I think I've got pretty much all the cables where they're gonna be. So, and here's the got the battery cables hanging at the top. This one, this one I might have to do over. I'm not sure. Also, the battery cables were both the same color, so I'm gonna be aware of that when you're doing it. I guess to figure it out. And the extra bolt that I found in the box was actually probably for this end of this battery cable. So, great. All right, I decided to uh, go ahead and try and fit the battery in here, like as a test fit, and just see what was going on before I started putting this bottom part on. And uh, turns out that was a good idea because this, this stuff was all in the way. So, uh, 
I would say mount the battery before you tie this stuff down and to a controlled position because it gets in the way. So, all right, next challenge to overcome. This is the uh, battery box holder. It bolts in from underneath like this, and um, well, these screws that I have built into it don't line up correctly. They're off. This one here is off by like I don't know, maybe a millimeter. So, the next challenge to overcome, I'm gonna try and bend it or something, or just whack it off completely. It's got three more. All right. All right, guys, I got it in. Uh, I'm only using three of the bolts. I did, I'm pretty sure I messed up the thread on this one when I was like trying to get it straight. But this side, since I'm using a lithium battery, it's only like three pounds anyway. It's not like the nine pound battery, so I don't think it's gonna matter. I also wrapped tape all the way around it because this lithium battery's got like spacers that aren't like physically really attached. I didn't want it to come off. But then that's in there, so I'm gonna move on to the next step here. All right, the uh, battery is very solidly in. Just I want to say that uh, after you, it looks sloppy when you put it in, but once you tighten everything down, the battery uh, becomes quite rigidly in place. Uh, I'm tying, using these uh, tie downs, getting the cables all cleaned up, and getting ready to put in the panel down here. I also went ahead and uh, uh, permanently did the wiring for the LED stuff and locked it down. I tested it with the uh, uh, I turned on the ignition and LEDs work and everything, so no problem there. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put a panel in here. And also, I sent a, like the panel that it, they sent is heavy, right? So I asked, actually ordered some crafting stuff, like an aluminum sheet and some acrylic sheets, and I may use that panel as a template. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put in the one that they sent to me and just uh, go ahead and cover this up for good. Okay, so I am... Uh... Looking at this panel, I can realize that this, this side's really shiny and nice, and this side isn't. And this is the side that's going to be facing up. It's like they didn't paint it very well at all. Actually, it looks kind of marked up, too. So, it goes in, anyhow. So, this uh, corner part goes into the rear left. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look as good as the other side, for sure. Okay, so... Um... I decided since this this metal one looks so bad, you can see it's like not a good, it's like a real flat finish, that I would go ahead and use it as a template to make a, another one out of uh, an acrylic sheet, which I, I'll link to those, but I bought a bunch of them. They, you can heat them and form them and stuff if with a heat gun, and you can, you can cut them with scissors actually too. So I just used it as a template, made a copy of it. This thing weighs way less, it actually looks better, you know. So, as long as it doesn't get up to 200 degrees, I won't have any issues, so. And then uh, I have some tin sheets coming too, and I'll probably replace it with a tin sheet when it gets here. But yeah, this is the first time I've actually made one of these, and I got some confidence with it now, and it looks pretty good, so I might try and redo the side panels too, and save another couple pounds. But we'll see, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. All right, there it is, look at that. My acrylic plate. Let's see, it looks, actually looks better than the one they sent, but we'll see if I get a chance to replace it with the uh, aluminum one or not. So, move on, I'll go ahead and set up the brackets on this part now, and we'll see if I can do some something up here with, save some more weight, because those other plates, I mean, they're, these plates are literally stuff I would put in a plate carrier. They are very heavy. Yeah, first bracket has been installed. I had to use the two of the existing uh, bolts from the toolkit carrier on the bike. They didn't send extra bolts for this, so I'm going to do the other side now. Alright, here's the brackets for the left side. Um, I had to undo the trash, or not trash, with the ties again to move things around so I could get these in, but basically uh, it comes with another bolt. You you remove the uh, bolt that's holding the plastic on the back here. You get a longer bolt, you shove it through, and then you just, uh, this thing's got like a little bracket that goes across you slide it on there and then you come over here and you they give you some another screw for this thing that goes into that it's got like a big watch on the other side so it doesn't go through this giant hole that's there from the old panel seating and uh i'm gonna rejigger this a little bit make sure nothing shows but yeah this one's and then I've, afterwards like you don't really even need to put this bolt on there but it came with the bowl, so I just screwed it on as best as I could after I was done because there's really no way to get in there to hold it in place while I was doing this. So, 
All right, so I'm gonna go on to the next step, which is putting on the plates or possibly making new plates. All right, here is a uh, left side plate. Uh, I did actually try and make my own uh, side plates and they didn't look that good. So I might come back to that later, but for right now I'm going with the kit plates. All right, we're on the right side. First thing you want to do is take the seat release and turn it around and just slide it through this little notch right here. All right, and then I'm going to put this plate on here. All right, the right side's on. The right side actually has a better fit than the left side did, so that's kind of weird. But I may come back and replace them both with my own custom ones here eventually, because really they don't need to go down this low. I could bring them up a little bit more and show a little more of the, uh, the here, yeah, hole here for the air box. All right, I'm going to go on into the next step. I think I'm going to do the fun part, the filters last. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe start putting this thing back together. I decided to go ahead and start doing the filters because I'm going to be covering up stuff here, so it'll make, make it harder to do it later. Um, first thing I did was I built this thing, this uh, monstrosity, the breather stuff. So I got some mish, mishimuto, mushimito hoses, whatever. They're half inch hoses. I got the half, half inch uh, push-in mail connector. It's a K&N um, breather filter. <laughs> And uh, it can't, this didn't come with any of uh, the worm clamps, but the hose came with worm clamps. And I also got this metal bar, T barb thing that's holding everything together. So I've got the two uh, right here. It's protected here and here. They all go out the same filter. And prior to this, all this stuff went into the air box, which honestly, like my air box is full of garbage and oil and stuff, which was not good. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the pod filters next. Alright, so that's two DNA pod filters installed. They have the 43 millimeter inlet here. Uh, this is a 60 millimeter fil uh, filter element, and the flange is 16 millimeters. So, 60 millimeters, 16 millimeters, and 43 diameter. All right, I've reattached both of these side covers, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the tank back on. All right, guys, so this is the next day, and I've done a couple test rides, so I want to give you a review of the performance changes, or if any, and some things you're going to know about the bike, and then I'm going to show you like a close-up of the different, as different parts of the, the kit now that it's installed, so you can see what it's going to look like. Uh, first of all, performance, I rode it twice today. Yeah, the first ride was just a shakedown ride, make sure nothing fell off or anything like that. And uh, it felt pretty much the same. I didn't really notice too much difference. Um, the second ride, I rode a little bit harder and I did some spirited riding and I did notice a change. It was like up in the high RPMs, closer to seven. I felt, it felt like it was getting a second wind, like above 6,500 or something. And it, I couldn't, it may have been that's because I wasn't used to it. Like it was just pulling the same the whole time. But I definitely felt more there when I was when I was going for it. There was more at the top end, so that, that was good. So um, as far as building the kit, uh, get extra cable ties. You're gonna need them. I recable I recable tied this thing several times, so I just keep cutting them off. They don't give you enough to do that. Uh, there were some fitment issues. Um, some of the holes weren't right where they needed to be. Uh, one screw I couldn't even use. And um, there was some paint differences, especially with that bottom panel that I replaced with the plastic. And the two side panels, it seemed like it had, it had a different fit. Like they don't sit on the bike the same way. I mean, it, you, I guess you can't really tell. Now they come back and look at it, it doesn't look that different. But when I was putting them on, I could tell. Uh, for the, the pods, make sure that when you're doing the pods, uh, you have the, the band, the metal band that goes around them pushed all the way to the end of the pod. Like, when you're tightening it, if it starts riding up the pod uh, flange closer to the filter element, uh, unloosen the band and redo it because it means it's going to pop off eventually. It's just, it means it's too, too tight. So, if you can go too tight, it'll look for the smallest opening and that, and that rubber will be like a lubricant almost. It'll just start sliding to the front and they'll, they'll, they'll come off. Um, 
the outside diameter of the air inlet is 42 millimeters. So you can use a 43 millimeter or a 44 millimeter inside diameter in uh, inside diameter on your filters, and a 60 or 70 millimeter um, filter length is probably gonna be fine. Um, the side plates are heavy, and so was the uh, the bottom plate. Uh, the shipping for the bike, or I'm sorry, the shipping for the kit was $150. So when you go, and it's no matter what you put in your cart for make MK Designs India, it's going to be 150 bucks. So put it when you go there, have a list and peruse there, and make sure you're getting everything you're ever going to want from them in the first shot. You don't want to pay that shipping too many times. Uh, the kit cost of this was 160 bucks, and it was it's pretty good. It's a pretty well thought out kit. I tried several times to make it better, and I really only found one way and that's to replace the panels with something uh, different with a different material um, as far as the building the breather hose down there at the bottom I that's a one half inch hose from Mishimoto a uh, a t-barb uh, a half inch t-barb and a one half inch diameter push in KNN breather filter but I feel like that filter is not super important so you probably buy whatever you want there but it has to be push in like a male and a half inch to go with the half inch hose. And the actual hoses, the, the old hoses, one of them was a half inch, I think the bottom one was a half inch, and the other hose that was coming out of this bike was a three eighths, but you can use a half inch on both of them for this with the uh, tightening bands. And the Mishimiti hose, Mishimiti, okay, the hose I got came with, came with uh, um, the, uh, fasteners and so did the t-barb so i had enough without buying extra uh it took me one day and one night to do this probably 22 total hours and a lot of that was me messing around just experimenting that's when i see if i could do stuff differently and uh, also i'd never done it before so you know trying to figure out how to get the air box out wasn't super easy i knew it was possible though because the guy talked about how he did it and uh he just didn't leave any instructions so you're gonna need the air injection delete kit uh, if you have the air injection still on your bike, because you're gonna, it comes with a plug where you can uh, stock in air codes, so you're gonna want that. And that's that's different from the uh, from the kit, the evap kit. So the evap kit I just did separately. Um, um, so that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna show you some uh, close-ups of some stuff here on the bike so you can get a better idea what it's going to look like all right so we got where the filters are you can see uh the bands here you want those pushed as far over as you can get them and that thing's seated totally otherwise you know i'm gonna pop off here's a close-up of how i constructed the uh the breather thing here it looks pretty cool i think it looks Looks pretty sick. Too bad you can't see it too well. Buried in there, and you gotta kind of keep it up. I mean, it's probably more down than it should be, but I don't know. It looks pretty cool. And so here's more of the inside here. Some cabling that is visible. What you can do about that? You got that ugly orange uh, plug up in there. Get some more stuff. Really, this, these panels are hiding a lot, so. I'll show you the other side here. Yeah. All right. So yeah, here's this experiment of junk. And I could actually, now that I'm looking at this, I could make another acrylic panel and just cover some of that stuff if I wanted to. But I don't know. I don't mind it really. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with the kit itself. I think it uh, was well thought out. You know, I feel like they make these things probably by hand each one, and they're probably all a little bit different. So, but yeah. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the video. I hope uh, hope it helps you guys out. I'm probably I'm actually thinking I'm not doing the throttle body now because this actually gave me what I wanted at the higher ends. So we'll see. I probably can't stop myself. Alright guys, thanks.